Let me hit again. Hi there, everyone. It's Liz again, and I want to say thank you so much for joining me uh, with this um, fun macrame sort of <laughs> class that I'm doing. Usually I do crochet classes, so this is something a little bit different, but it's going to be a lot of fun and probably easier than you think. And happy I Love Yarn Day to everyone. So thanks for joining me for I Love Yarn Day. And thank you to Michaels for sponsoring this class. So let me show you. I'm getting notifications, so don't mind me. But let me show you what we're going to make. I know I have kind of a loud quilty background here. But this is, if you can see it, the wall hanging. And we'll do it on the spotlight, too, so you can see it close up. This is the front. This is the back. Um, and it's basically just putting all these um, yarn on here and then we're going to sort of weave it around like a little bit of a tapestry weave and then tie it back down on the bottom. So it's really super simple. Let's switch to my hands and then I can show you a little bit closer up what this looks like. This recording. Okay, got it. Okay, here we go. So I'm using my Premier Cotton Fair, which is a really nice, uh, like a fingering weight, lightweight yarn. I've got three colors here, but really you can use any type of yarn with this. You, um, of course, macrame yarn is always good for this because it's nice, sturdy cotton, but this is cotton as well. So this will work nice and you'll have nice, like of a, um, not as thick, you know? So, let me show you what I did to get these strands on. I have this loop, it's a 12 inch loop. Oh yeah, and if anyone has any questions, just throw them in the chat. I'm gonna try to check as we go along. And if you wanna say hello and let me know where you're watching from, you can do that too. I'm in Florida, it's a little hot today. Okay, so I've got my 12 inch loop. I added a few of these strands, but I'm gonna show you how we mount these. And if you've never done anything macrame before, these are called a lark's head knot. So I did a few pre-cuts here. Now I'd say these are about, about two meters long should give you more than enough. So two to two and a half meters. And a good way to measure that is if you wanna take your end and then just put it to your shoulder to the end of your hand that's about a meter so that's like a quick way to measure and then you can just cut i did 16 of the black and 16 of the white and then i mean i'm sorry 16 of the black 16 of the gray and then i did 24 of the white because there's like three stripes of white so then once you get your approximately two meters, it doesn't have, definitely doesn't have to be exact because we're going to um, trim the ends. So you're gonna wanna fold it in half. So your two ends are equal or together. And then the top of your strand, you loop it, you just fold it like this. So to make the lark's head, this is how you would start with all macrame to mount it on anything you're gonna mount it on. A ring like this or a, um, a wooden dowel. So you just take your loop. Let's see if I can close up a little bit more, here we go. Take your loop, put it over, and then put those two strands under the loop and then just pull it through. It's really, really simple. So I'm doing this on a flat surface so I can, you know, for the cameras, but it might be easier if you have it hung on something, like if you just have a hook and you work from a hanging position, that might be easier to maneuver around. But I wanna be able to show you close up on camera. So let me see. I got a question. Hi from DC and somebody, Beverly says she's in Florida too, which it's like super hot. And uh, Emma says, hi from Georgia. And can you use a 14 inch? Oh yeah, you can absolutely use any 
hoop that you want. I just happen to have a 12 inch, but if you want to use a bigger one or a smaller one, go right ahead. And you can like really modify this. You don't have to make the exact design that I did. That was just what I came up with, but you can make easier ones or even more complex ones. So I just did it to the top. And then this is probably the trickiest part because you have to do it like nice and tight. So what you would do is first, I did the white ones, right? So the white ones just go from the top. And then as you can see, I didn't, I didn't weave them in with any other colors. I just mounted them to the bottom. So you, let's say you do the white ones like this. You start at the top, put it on the lark's head knot, and then on the bottom, you wanna pull it as tightly as you can. Hi, Angela from Chicago. And then go over like this. This is how I do it, but there's a couple different ways to do it. I don't want to have my finger cover. Okay, so you're going to go over, under, and then put this over the top like that. So see how I put it over the top, back to the bottom. And now that I have that little loop there, I can take it and feed it through that loop and pull it out. And that makes like a um, half hitch knot. So see when you pull it, it looks like that. Let's do another one in white so we can see, see it a little better since I have a gray background. So I'll get my strand of white. This is a fingering weight yarn. If you're very new, well, I mean, this is like such an easy thing to do, but if you're like, oh, I don't want to work with that little skinny yarn, it's too hard to do the knotting and stuff. You could totally start with a nice bulky weight yarn and it will be um, really quick. You'll have a nice wall hanging quickly. Okay, so we'll put it on with a lark's head. So over the top. And then just pull those two strands through. Pull it tight. Now to, to attach it to the bottom, we're gonna go over, then under to the left, over the top again. I'm trying to hold it so it doesn't loosen as I do this. Through the back. And then once you make that loop, you just feed your ends back through that loop to make a half hitch knot. And it just looks nice and it will pull pretty tight. Now, if that's just like too annoying and you don't wanna do that, you can totally just tie it at the bottom you don't have to make a half hitch knot at the bottom. So with this black one, I put it on. If you want, you can just go under and then like tie it, tie it in. I just think it looks prettier when you see, I just basically, oh, whoops. Through like that. But then that just looks like you um, made a, like a basic knot. So either one, you can do it like that or you can do a half hitch knot and the half hitch knots will pull nice and tightly and they lay sort of with the work um, facing up. If you do just like a basic knot, it's gonna sort of be facing in a little bit of a different direction, but nothing, None of that you'll ever really see when you look at this on the wall. You know, that's gonna be something only if you're looking really closely at it. So let's say I kind of mix up my colors here, but let's say I put a few on this side and a few on this side. And I did eight of the gray and I did eight of the black next. And then I did eight of the gray over here. And then I weaved the grays under the other grays. And you can mix them around too. So weave the up, weave the grays under the black if you prefer. 
So let's add another Hi from Chicago. Can you repeat how many of each color and can you use any kind of yarn? Yep, you can totally use any kind of yarn. Um, something that's like really silky might give you some trouble because it'll slip all around here um, and it might not tighten well. Anything that's cotton will, will work really well and probably a thicker yarn will um, be very easy to so if you it'll kind of get you through it really quick this yarn looks pretty because you can really see the detail and all these little weaves so if you use a thicker yarn it's all going to be just thicker but you can totally use any kind of yarn but um cotton would probably be preferable i would say because cotton doesn't really stretch or slip as much as some other yarns, that's why they use it a lot in macrame. Oh, okay, so, and somebody said, can I repeat how many? So each um, strand that I cut, so each two meter strand, I did eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I did 16 of the grays. I did 16 of the black. And I did 24 of the white, because I put an extra eight whites in the center, just as like a background. And if you don't even want to do it at the top, you can just mount them at the bottom. But I liked how it came all the way through to the bottom. So that's why I put the white back there. So now the way I weaved it is you're gonna go like with the first one here, let's put a couple on and then I'll show you how to weave it because it might be confusing. Um, if I do them one at a time. So let's just put a few of these on. Let's do four. Okay, so remember, fold it in half, fold your two meter strand in half, mount it on with a lark's head knot. And then to mount it to the bottom, well, we're not gonna mount it to the bottom yet. We're gonna, these we did because these were the center ones, but um, the ones that we have to weave, we're not gonna mount to the bottom yet because we wanna be able to move those around. So let's put on four here. Two. How long are the string? Can you use any kind of yarn? So each um, strand that I folded in half, I measured about two meters. And a quick way to measure it is to take one. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exact because we're gonna trim the ends. So you take one strand and put it at your shoulder, like your right shoulder and then pull your left hand, I don't know if you can see me. That's one meter. So from your shoulder with your arm outstretched is one meter approximately. And then you grab that piece and then put it at your shoulder and outstretch your arm, that's about two meters. So it's very, very approximate because like I said, we're gonna cut some, so about two meters each strand. Then you fold that two meter strand in half, you mount it with the lark's head knot, And the best thing to do is to mount all your pieces to the top first before you do any tying to the bottom, except for the white ones. You can, those white ones that are in the background, you can tie those on first, but you can go ahead and mount them all on first. It's just, the, it, they get a little cumbersome having everything on at once. So if you want, you can just sort of tie the bottom in a loose knot so the ends don't get all tangled together each like group, each color group. So if I was mounting all the other ones, I would say I would take these eight and just tie it like this so it doesn't get all tangled up with the rest. So let's say, I'm not gonna do all of them because we don't have time, but I'll put five, I put five here. Oh, 
And then let's put five of the white on the other side. So let's got two meters. Two, see, I'm being like really guessy <laughs> with my meters here. Three, that's about the same. And last one. Once I measure one, I just measure the rest to that one that I already measured. So we're gonna fold it in half, make sure the ends are even. So you got it folded evenly. And Clark's head knot. And if you guys have taken uh, classes with Michaels before, you know that this is all recorded. Um, so you can go back and rewatch it if you forget any of the steps or any of the knots or any of the weave. But this is really one of those things that once you do it, once you know how to do it, you can just kind of make any design you want. Go on Pinterest, look at what people do and just kind of, you can see where they put, where they folded, um, like how many strands they mounted and where they weaved them in. And you can just make this similar thing. Okay. So now I have four whites here and I have five blacks here. But this is just for the sake of showing you how I weave these in. So what you do is you first, these are the, let's say these are the closer ones. You're gonna go with the white, you're gonna go like over, the first one of the black and then under the other four, or it'll be in this case, if you make it exactly like mine, it'll be seven. And then with your second strand, and, and it's one piece that we cut, but it ends up being two strands with the way we fold it. But because it's so thin, I kept it in two strands. I didn't separate the strands. So we went over one and under the others. Here, we're gonna go over two. And under the others. And now I'm gonna go moving to the right with another strand. I went over two, now I'm gonna go over three. So one, two, three, the first three of the black and under the rest. And then I'm gonna go over four. One, two, three, four and under whatever's remaining. Like that. I'm just gonna check my comments here and see if I'm answering everyone's question. Hi from North Texas. Can you use a 14 inch? How long? We got all that. Okay, good. Can you use any kind of yarn? Yeah. So we talked about the yarn. 
we talked about everything, especially in the yarn world, can, can uh, almost always be modified, right? With like knitting and crocheting, you, it's gonna be different when you wanna substitute. You know, there are, there are specific things with yarn substitution, but for macrame, uh, I'd say anything that's cotton will work pretty good, especially something simple like this where we're just going over and under. Okay, so see how it made that really pretty design? And that's what I did. And you can see the difference with this one. This almost looks like it could be one just as it is, right? What I did, let me mount a few at the bottom and then we'll talk about the one I did. So now you're just gonna try to keep them as tight as you can. And don't worry if they get loose because I have a trick for that too. So just like we did at the beginning, over the top, I'm gonna pull it through to the left and then go like over the strand, over the part that you're holding tight. And when you go over it, it makes a little loop. So just catch that loop, pull that yarn through and then feed those ends right through that little loop that you made. And you'll get a half hitched knot. Pull it nice and tight. So over the top, to the left, over, make a loop, pull your, feed your ends through that loop. Once you do it a few times, it's easy. Over the top, to the left. Uh, so I usually do crochet classes, um, but I have found the, the macrame that I have done is very satisfying because you can finish a project a lot quicker than you can finish a knitting project or a crochet project. So if you knit or crochet, you know those are very time consuming and it takes a long time to learn and to perfect that skill. With macrame, it's, um, it's a lot easier to learn and, a lot, and the projects you can complete a lot quicker because you're basically just nodding. You're just nodding, nodding, nodding. And there's only so many ways to knot. <laughs> so um, I encourage everybody to try, try macrame. It's pretty satisfying, okay. So somebody said, are there different numbers of string in each color group or is the pro are the project instructions the numbers? Oh, the, the only reason why I am only I'm doing less strands is because it would take too long to go through the, the whole one. But I'm going to talk you through those steps. OK, so I just wanted to show you kind of how to do the technique. And then I'll talk you through like exactly how many strands. So you can either write it down or just rewatch the video. But like I said, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's easy and you can just kind of go out and do your thing, you know? So then these, I would do the same exact thing. I would mount, or I would do a half hitch knot for each one. Okay, and then, now let me get back to, my piece that I did here. And I'll just kind of go over everything again. Because now you sort of know how to do the skill and that was basically the skill. So it's basically like three things, mounting it to the top, weaving it through, which you saw how easy that was and mounting it to the bottom. Now for this one, I started with the white, okay? So I put on eight pieces, um, eight, I guess you could call them strands, but remember they're folded in half, but we did not separate those strands. You can, if you were to separate those strands, 
um, like at the bottom, you can't separate them at the top, but at the bottom, then it would, they would all just come out like a lot further like that. Right. But I don't think that would look good. And it would be, um, it probably would slip too much. So you're going to put the eight strands of the white, and then you can just mount them directly to the bottom and then boom, you're done with that step. Okay. So top to bottom with the white and then put on the eight strands of the gray on the left side and then eight strands of the black on the right side. And don't mount those yet because those will be weaved in. And then you'll do the same thing, but I switched it. So eight strands of black and then eight strands of gray and don't mount those either. Um, and then you could also flip this too. So if you wanted to do like two grays and two blacks, you would have, um, you see how mine is like the gray and the gray are weaved in together. So you can't really see the weave as much. Same with the black, the black and the black are weaved in together. And then if you see here, I weaved the black into the white. So you can kind of, I don't know, it just has a different effect. So if you'd like that better, switch around your colors and you don't have to do it exactly how I did it. So then I weaved in these by putting the gray under the first strand and then over the other seven. And then the next one to the right, I put under two strands and then over the next six. And then the third one, I put under three strands and over the rest. So you don't have to weave in and out, in and out, in and out. You just put it on, you just weave it under like one, then two, then three, then four, then five, like that. You don't have to go over, under, over, under. You're just weaving under really one strand at a time, I guess. Um, and then I did the same with the black here. So I went over this first one, I mean, under this first one, over the other seven, and then under two, over the rest, and then under three, over the rest, and then under four, until I got to this last one here, which is under all eight of these strands, because there's eight and eight. So this eighth one is underneath all these eight strands. And then if it's getting too cumbersome, you can mount those all on the bottom. So, because when you have all of those together, it might sort of shift around and stuff. So you can mount those to the bottom. And then when you do the whites, what I did with the white was the same exact thing. I just did um, under, over the rest, under two, over the rest, under three, over the rest. And the only difference with the white is once they were like this, right? Once they were mount or once they were sort of weaved, I took one strand and instead of just mounting it here to the bottom, I just folded it over and mounted it to the other side. And then I did the same with the other one. I folded it over and mounted it to the other side like that. So it makes this effect where it's just folded over. And you can see how that worked from the back too. So you can see how it went over and then the one that was hanging just kind of went off to the side. And then I mounted those there. And it did shift around a bit. So what I did was getting like sunlight here. What I did was I took my glue gun and I glued all these <laughs> strands at the bottom. I just glued those on so they wouldn't move around and it worked pretty good. This thing traveled with me uh, on the plane and everything and it hasn't really moved around at all. So, and I didn't do it like super, super tight it shifts a little bit, that's okay. So just glue it to the bottom. Once you have it on perfect the way you want it, just put some hot glue on there and it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I, the last thing I did was just add this little hanging. So I just did a smaller piece. I mounted it on with um, a lark's head knot and just tied it with a knot and uh, put the beads on and then tied it. 
and that just makes a little hang to the wall. And then of course, once I, I hung it up and then I just trimmed my bottoms flat across. If you wanna trim them diagonally, you can do that too. Just trim them however you want. That's why it's fun to have a little extra because then you can play around with how you wanna trim them. And I think that was basically how I did it. Let me check our chat and see if anyone has any questions. Okay. Uh, are there different numbers of strings in each color group? Part of the project instructions, are the numbers different for teaching? Yes, so the numbers are different for teaching. And then we went over how many strands for each of these. Uh, what about adding beads to the middle? You can definitely add beads to the middle. Um, you would just have to, this one's moving on me. Move that guy back. Trying to think if you could add them, maybe here where you, where you had just the, you didn't do any of the weaving. Maybe try adding some beads there and see how you like that. Um, because I'm trying to think if they would slip, play around with it and see what looks good. But I've seen this with beads and also here where you have the, the fringe, you could totally add beads here or add um, like, um, like braid a few and add a couple beads or just hang a few strands here, like a few extra strands here with beads at the bottom, you could do that too. And there was another thing. Oh, and this can be those um, wood embroidery hoops too. You can totally mount those on those thicker wood embroidery hoops. It doesn't have to be this metal hoop. This just happened to be what I had. Uh, or on the yes beads on the bottom totally <laughs> play around with it and make something really fun it'll be like that's part of the fun right is getting creative and making making your own thing and if you look on pinterest and just look up um yarn wall hanging you will see there's tons of these some of them are just they just took one part and put it over and another part and put it over boom and that was it like super super simple so you can do um Lots of different fun decor. Okay, so does anyone have any more questions before I say goodbye? I hope everyone had fun. I know it's I Love Yarn Day. This was an easy project, so it was a simple class, um, but I hope you had fun if you did knitting and crochet. I really like the crochet classes. I'm pretty much an expert at that though, uh, but knitting is, an, is something that I'm also learning which has been very satisfying. So I encourage everyone to do some knitting, do some crocheting, do some more macrame um, and join me. I'm actually, oh, do I have it here? I actually have another class that I'm doing next week and it is called branch weaving. And that is really, really cool and really fun. If you wanna wait one second, I'm gonna get the branch weave so I can show you guys. I forgot to have it, but I do have it right here. This is another super simple project that's really, really easy to do. Um, and you can kind of just be creative with it too. See here, I'll put on my other camera. But that's what we're doing next Saturday. So if you wanna do branch weaving, join me for that. If not, I will see you at my next class. And thank you everyone for joining me today. Happy Yarn Day. Remember this class is recorded. So if you want to go back and rewatch everything, anything, uh, you can do that too. And don't forget to post on Instagram and wherever. Uh, make it premiere, make it with Michaels, um, any projects that you have made. And happy Yarn Day, guys. Thanks for watching.